journal bearing options, small frame size, good boost response, big power. Let's talk about Airworks. All right guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about the S200 SXE. You get two different versions. Uh, the most popular is the 650 horsepower uh, option and it's journal bearing. It's got a nice and responsive turbine side, uh, low back pressure turbine design. The arrows on the compressor are fantastic. They make 650 horse and you'll see that at the wheels. Uh, we've got a couple of these installed on Porsches and a couple of other, op uh, other um, uncomplicated installations where in single trim, single turbocharger trim, as well as in twin, we've seen uh, the 600 horse at the wheels plus, and uh, on a twin turbo Porsche, we've seen uh, 12, 20 horse at, uh, at all fours. So uh, they definitely cut out uh, in terms of delivering the goods and deliver what they actually advertised on their compressor maps and in the catalogs. Now, a little bit about these turbos, they're journal bearing, they're reliable, the bearing system inside here is robust, it's got abnormally large thrust pads or thrust faces on the thrust bearing and your mating steel collars. The journal bearings are large enough, the turbine shaft is thick enough to handle any boost that you throw at it. We'll go into the compressor map just now and uh, we'll actually show you what the compressor map looks like and what you can expect in terms of what sort of boost pressures you can run. Even though it's journal bearing, you will not find failures like you would with other turbochargers that use 360 degree thrusts. The nice thing about this specific turbo is the most popular housing is your AR83 with a T4 inlet flange and V-band out. Now, this is a T3 family AR83 volute. However, with a T4 twin scroll, completely divided inlet face. That makes for an even better spool when using a separated manifold or tuned port manifold. Now, turbine wheel is a 10 blade wheel. As I mentioned, it's got a really low uh, uh, back pressure. What we normally do as well when guys start uh, running high boost pressures and uh, they want to start using this for circuit racing uh, where they want some punch response coming out of corners where they might be feathering the throttle and then immediately come onto the throttle and they expect a power delivery right there and then. We have got uh, CNC cylindrical grinding uh, facilities in-house where we'll actually go and uh, uh, grind a cutback onto these blades. Um, a little bit about the compressor stage, 57 inducer and 76 millimeter exducer, same size as your EFR 7670. It has a speed sensor port built in and uh, it's got a fully machined intake tract and it's an anti-surge or ported shroud housing as well. I'll show you some close-ups of that shortly. The nice thing about the turbocharger is you're able to get all the individual components from compressor wheels, bearing housings, repair kits, shafts, etc., in order to maintain, repair, service all of these turbochargers the, in the entire SXE range, in fact. And the reason that they've done that is a lot of companies that have got numerous race cars in your more budget type circuit racing applications uh, would like to run various heats. And after let's say three or five or 10 heats, they're just like uh, a turbo specialist like ourselves, just to take care of the turbochargers, disassemble, inspect, replace at least a bearing kit inside there, and then obviously reassemble, balance, and put everything back together again, giving it a clean bill of health without breaking the bank, having to replace the entire turbocharger, which you'll more than likely find in some of the ball bearing applications. Let's come in and get some close ups, and then I'm gonna go to the compressor map and we'll go from there. Let's start with the turbine wheel 10 blade turbine wheel. Uh, inducer, which is the larger side over there, is 69.5 millimeters. Exducer, which is your exit, is 61.5 millimeters, 61.43, but we round it off to 61.5. Uh, it is a, a relatively lightweight turbine wheel because of the fact that it only has 10 blades. Um, as I mentioned, it is journal bearing. It has a normal, typical heat shield. You'll have your normal oil inlet and outlet opposite one another. It's an oil-cooled bearing housing. For those of you that are uh, au fait with your Garrett uh, bearing housings, you'll notice that this flange face is very similar to your Garrett 
as well as the inlet here, except it's not your uh, twin threaded hole, it's actually a threaded center hole. Compressor housing, or the compressor stage, the compressor side. As mentioned, you'll see your anti-surge or ported shroud version. And take a look at the angle that this port has been cut at. It actually angles upwards so that the direction of flow, the reverse pulse reverberation, does not have to change direction so many times. It literally goes straight out and circulates from the port back around to the inlet. A little bit of attention to detail that is shown by Borg Warner here goes a long way. Compressor wheel is a seven blade splitter. It's a forged mill wheel. In other words, it is not an extrusion of aluminium which is then milled uh, on a five axis machine. They actually take this material, they forge it, which increases the density and improves the homogeneous uh, state of the, of the material before then machining. So the weight of the wheel or the density of the wheel will be that much more, allowing you to run those high boost pressures without worrying about a cyclic fatigue failure or what we term HCF, high cycle fatigue. The total height of the wheel is quite high. Um, it's got a nice large tip height and it also has extended tip. So these tips over here extend past the diameter of the back disc, just increasing flow that little bit more. The twin scroll turbine housing, if you have a look at the, the actual beefy appearance of the housing, you would assume that this is an oversized turbine housing, but when in actual fact looking at the volute dimensions inside, you'll notice that they're really small. They're a T3 family, although it's got a T4 twin scroll flange face, and obviously you have your V-band outlet. All right, guys, so this is the compressor map, which you see on your screen now, of the S200 SXE. You'll notice that it has got a 57 millimeter inducer compressor and a 76.2 millimeter exducer. It does have an extended tip, as I've mentioned to you pre uh, earlier. Um, at the same time, I just want to talk about the compressor map and some of the benefits of this specific compressor map. If you have a look here, your, this is your P2C ratio, once again, one bar atmospheric and zero boost pressure gauge at the same point. Now, this specific turbocharger's compressor has got a 75% efficiency. Okay, that's the maximum efficiency. And from 0.7 bar gauge pressure, you will start seeing that you're entering the maximum efficiency island from such a low boost pressure, all the way up to two bar boost, you're still in the maximum efficiency island. From 0 0.6, 0 0.7 bar, you've got a very wide range of uh, 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 flow that you can use for a big choice of different engine sizes. Now, let's go across, let's, let's drop the boost a little bit. Let's go to 1.4 bar boost, and let's move across to the end of that compressor map. At 1.4 bar boost pressure, you are smack bang through the middle of the efficiency island, and capable of flowing 60 pounds, of, pounds per minute of airflow, which equates to about 600 horsepower. So you do not have to boost this turbocharger that much to start seeing big numbers. However, let's say you get to two bar boost, you'll start to see from two bar upwards, from 1.8, 1.9 bar boost upwards, uh, right up until you get to 3.2 bar, you will see that you're gonna be in the area where this compressor flows 65 pounds per minute of airflow, 650 horsepower. This is a huge, a very long vertical range of power. And even at the highest point of 3.2 bar boost, you are still exceeding or you're still crossing through the 70% efficiency island. So you've only lost 5%. Not that you'd really run that kind of boost pressure. Um, you know, the typical application would normally find you at about 2.4 bar boost to max out the turbocharger and keep it there specifically on your race type applications or drag type applications depending on engine size of course so clearly just by looking at your p2c ratio you can clearly see that the bearing system has been designed specifically to handle very high boost pressures let's go right up to the extreme let's go right up to uh, 3.6 3 bar boost pressure, I mean, you, you're still crossing through a 64 
and 65, 66, 67 percent efficiency island although you're reaching the top of the map and obviously close to the choke limit with a very short uh, uh, um, airflow you know between your surge and your choke line you still are able to run these turbochargers at these huge boost pressures so this is an absolutely amazing journal bearing turbocharger it gives you a wide range of boost pressures that are still in the efficiency and a huge range of horsepower let's say for example you wanted to take a streetcar boost 1.2 bar boost gauge pressure and not have to drop compression or re replace internals you are capable of running approximately 580 horsepower at 1.2 bar boost depending on the engine and obviously if the engine can consume the flow that this turbocharger can provide so this is a serious contender for a lot of different applications from 1600s all the way up to a small v8 uh, with a low rpm band hey guys so i hope you guys learned something today about the s200 sxe 650 horse capable turbo it really is a great option, journal bearing, reliable, serviceable, repairable, makes great power with a very wide range in its compressor map. But at the same time, have a look at the physical size of this turbo. It is not very big. I mean, it's just a little bit wider than the size of my hand, giving you 650 capable horsepower. That is a serious contender. For the price compared to a ball bearing uh, option, it, is, it makes it that much more attractive. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you liked it. Please comment, subscribe, like. Catch you next time.